So, here we are in Khan Academy. I'm zooming in a bit. This is the um, this is the account that I made just for this stream. We are in second grade. Now you'll notice, you'll notice that when I go into second grade, the first thing we want to notice is that we're already 8% of the way done, even though we haven't opened this, um, even though we haven't opened this yet. And that's because, as I said, there is overlap. It's one of the things I really love about Khan Academy is it builds the review right in. So we're already 8% done, but the thing I want to really draw your attention to, that's not it, is that there are 7,500 quote-unquote mastery points available in this, uh, in this grade. Now, going back to kindergarten and first grade, kindergarten had 3,000 um, mastery points available, and first grade had just under 3,000 available. So the actual amount of work that we're going to be doing here in second grade is going to be a little bit more than both of those last two grades combined. Like I said, this is the first time that we're really going to start sort of getting the math train running. Choo-choo. So, add and subtract within 20. See, we don't have to add within 20 because we've already done it. I'm going to go ahead and do this add within 20 visually. And what we have here, and I'm going to zoom in just a touch. And what we have here is um, a really good visualization of how to add using 10 grids. So if you are still a little bit uncomfortable or if let's say it's the first time uh, you've been doing class for a while because it's been summer break and you're what, eight, nine years old? I have no idea what age kids are at grades, but you're gonna be sort of trying to remember. So this gives a good set of scaffolding, which is a word I've used before, to, to remind students, oh yeah, I can just take two of these and move them into the other 10 grid so that'll be 10, and then those two are gone, so that gives me one group of 10 and two ones. The answer is 12. Now, we've done a lot of this, so it's entirely possible that your student will not need this review. I recommend doing it anyway. It's an excellent warm-up, and it's good to remind yourself of the last step that you took before you take the next step. But that's just my opinion. It's not like I'm an expert or anything. That's a joke, because I am an expert. So, I'm just going to blitz through these. But they're the same thing. If the student doesn't remember how to add, they can just count. 9 plus 9 is 18. 12 plus 5. Oh, this is neat. We didn't really look at this um, number line thing before. So, if we start at 0 and we go up 12, we're at 12, and we go up another five, we're at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I'm really glad that they're bringing this up because this is my preferred way to visualize addition and subtraction, especially once we start getting to negative numbers, which really mess things up for a lot of folks. Five plus 11 is 16. I don't even need to look at the blocks. And again, if your student doesn't need to look at the blocks, that's fine, so long as they could if they had to. Kestrel says, I can see where parents with no information can see Common Core and lose their mind because we were all taught terribly. Ain't that the truth? This is really helpful for knowing where it's all going, and I really appreciate that feedback. Um, it's, it's important to me that this is accessible um, because... The problem with Common Core isn't that it's inaccessible, it's that nobody put out the effort to make it accessible. 5 plus 8 is 13. Moving on. Now, we already mastered Add Within 20, so I'm skipping it. 